David, uh, you're fairly new to South Africa, I understand. You've only been in the country for a couple of months. From your perspective, what does the, what is the uh, unit trust industry uh, look like um, in terms of its size, its sophistication, the amount of research that are, is already being done on the industry? Can you give us some sort of perspective coming from, uh, from Canada or from really the developed world? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think, uh, number one, I'd say that it's, um, you know, a, a very well-developed uh, investment and specifically fund industry. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I think it's probably be be better regulated than I um, might have feared um, uh, coming into it. What, you didn't um, think that we were well-regulated here know, in South Africa? Me that they're better, better regulated than I might have feared, anyway, coming into it. There are some countries with some pretty... Um, that are sort of lacking in the uh, in the regulation department, and so um, you know, and I also think you know, given the the West per maybe um, naivete about um, the state of uh, a lot of African countries, that you know, I think a lot of those sort of play in at the back of your mind. But uh, you know, I think I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that it's quite a developed um, and, and robust uh, industry. What about fees? What's your opinion on fees across the board in South Africa? Well, I mean, this is one of the areas that I think. Um, you know, from my initial sort of research anyway, that, that regulation could probably be improved. It seems that, uh, you know, the, the fees don't seem to be quite as transparent here in terms of what goes into them, um, consistency in what, in what makes up a fee from company to company, um, and then including, you know, what is, at the end of the day, what, what the investor really wants to know is, you know, what, what, what are they paying for that fund? And there's a lot of different sources of fees. Some are included in certain calculations and others aren't in, in other calculations. And so um, trying to figure all that out is, is um, uh, you know, can be difficult. So um, generally speaking, it looks like fees are reasonable here, but that's hard to say just because, you know, you want to make sure you're comparing apples to uh, apples. David, from your perspective, I know it's early days, but do you think that it's an overtraded market segment? In other words, uh, if you look at the number of mutual funds or unit trusts, uh, I mean, I think at the moment there are more unit trusts than there are shares listed on the, on the stock market. Does it appear to be perhaps an overtraded? And then linked to that, how does Morningstar help the investor through all of that? What is, what is it that Morningstar brings to, to the discussion that can help investors choose between these different um, unit trusts. Okay, so two big, two big questions. Um, in short, to the first question, I think that um, I don't think that it's overtraded. I think that there, um, and this is not just a South African phenomenon. I think this is very much a global phenomenon. Um, the financial world, and in particular the, the fund industry, um, it moves towards greater and greater options and um, flexibility in providing you know, all options to all possible investors and, and, and create increasingly complex products. Um, and so the proliferation of the number of funds that you see um, largely has to do a lot more with um, you know, offering the same type of fund in many different flavors and varieties. So you might have you know, a fund, you know, basic South African equity fund that's offered um, you know, with different types of fees, and so there's different share classes of these funds created. Or you might have one that, you know, um, it's a foreign equity fund, and so there's currency hedging involved versus, you know, a different share class which doesn't hedge currency. And so what you get is a lot of different uh, variants on the, on the same underlying investment strategy, and that's really increasing the number of funds um, globally, dramatically. Um, and it, it creates a very messy universe that's very difficult for the investor to sort through. Do you think um, ultimately, so uh, David, question, let me just interject there before you answer his second question. Yeah. When you talk about this messy universe for investors out there, do you think that consolidation will ultimately take place? Uh, I, I think so, but the, the, the trouble is it, it has to outpace the rate at which um, you know, product innovation and, and proliferation occurs. And you know, I don't know that we've been seeing that. It, it, it seems to me in every single market that, um, you know, or most major markets that Morningstar operates, um, you know, I've been seeing the number of funds only increasing rather than decreasing. And so there is you know, these, these fits of consolidation. And I think in different markets, it happens to differing degrees. In Canada, that was certainly the case. Um, 
you know, in the, in the past several years, but you still have a growing number of products because it's just outpacing any consolidation. I hope you can remember Kevin's second question. Now, do you, do you want it to repeat it? It was quite a while ago. Yeah. Second question? No, yeah, I do. Uh, David, I just wanted to get a sense of how Morningstar adds to the discussion um, and what it yeah. brings to, to the investor in terms of navigating through all these different unit trusts. Well, there's a lot of different ways that Morningstar gets involved. Um, we really, I mean, all the unifying theme between the way we get involved is, is really that, just that. We, we offer, um, you know, we're looking to give investors um, advice or, or help them better um, make better decisions. And um, we do that by helping investors directly, writing, um, in, in my case, I write, um, I evaluate mutual funds, the managers who run them, the companies that offer them, uh, and try to tell them uh, offer them an independent opinion about whether I think they're a worthwhile investment. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, it is just an opinion. Um, people are free to disagree with it. But, you know, I think what the investor can take solace in is that it's an independent opinion. Unlike, you know, if you go into a bank, you know, you're probably going to get recommended, uh, you know, the funds offered by that bank. Um, or you have to worry about, you know, sort of what, what um, uh, you know, what are the conflicts of interest um, might arise. Um, and then, uh, you know, other ways that we do it is, is really much, I think, we view ourselves um, in an advocacy role, um, engaging the, the entire industry um, in an open dialogue about investor issues. And so that's not just the fund companies, but the industry regulators, um, any sort of self-governing bodies. And let's just, you know, what, ideally what we want to do is just talk about the issues that investors face and how can we create regulations? What is the biggest issue that investors we, face um, right now, in your opinion? Transparency. David, the biggest issue What's that... that? What's the biggest issue that investors face right now, in your opinion? Um, I think there's two things that are equally important. One is transparency. I think the um, uh, access to clear, concise, intelligible information um, and, the, and the right type of information uh, for investors to make good decisions is, is lacking, I think, all over the world. Uh, but I think in South Africa, probably more than uh, in Canada and the US and, and even some of developed Europe. Um, and then the other issue is, is just investor education. Having, you know, having some understanding about the, the very basics of portfolio construction. You know, a lot of people, I think, um, you have very little idea and, so, you know, and don't even know how to go about finding a good, good advisor um, to, to help them with it. And they don't even know sort of the, the very basics of what questions should I be asking of my advisor. So I think it's, I think it's twofold. Give them the information that they need and then teach them you know, a little bit about what to do with it. They don't have to be experts, but you know, enough to be able to kick the tires a bit on an advisor and an, or on an investment. David, uh, coming back to <clears throat> where I started the discussion, you fairly new in South Africa as far as I know. What can we expect from Morningstar and what can, what can investors look for in terms of uh, added input to the debate? Well, um, I think, you know, uh, right off the bat, uh, my, my goal here is to start once, I, I, I'm in the process now of getting to know uh, the fund uh, industry here, and that includes the regulatory environment, but also the companies um, and the fund managers out there and the different products that exist. Um, and then uh, from there is to write um, research reports and, and rate funds. And so we have a, um, a rating system that basically um, ranges from, you know, gold, silver, bronze are uh, ratings of all, all um, ratings of funds where we recommend them to some degree or other. We have a neutral rating and a negative ratings. And then there's a, you know, a very detailed report that follows that. So, you know, for the investor who just wants to know at a, at a glance, what does Morningstar think about this fund? The rating helps them with that for maybe an advisor or an institutional, um, somebody um, at a more institutional level who wants to know Morningstar's opinion, um, they can, th there's a robust amount of research to back up that opinion about why we like a fund or dislike a fund. Um, and I think that'll help, number one, any investors who are so inclined to, to look into it and come to our website and, and look these things up. But um, you know, to a gr great degree around the world, advisors really uh, use our research heavily because you know, a lot of them spend most of their time managing their relationships with their clients. And it's hard to dedicate, you know, hours and hours of work to, to researching investments. And so they'll often come to us for our opinions. And if we can help advisors make better decisions, we're, we're just as happy to do that uh, as we are to speak to the, uh, David, the, thank the end investor. Thanks very much. We're going to give you some more time to settle down into the role. And then we're going to ask probing questions around fund managers across the board, including Mr. Kevin Ling's here <laughs> sitting with me.